Just because you can render 12K or 16K images in Unreal Engine 5 doesn't mean you should. But in today's video, I will show you how to do super high res renders in Unreal Engine 5. So if you're in a situation where you need to render a super high res render out of Unreal Engine 5, you have to do that with the movie render queue. You're going to click on the clapboard right here and pull up your render settings. You're going to go to your render and you're going to go to the settings and change anything that you need that's specific to your project. I have my own render settings that I typically use for my project. So I'm going to import that really quick and then we'll talk about the high res stuff. After you apply the render settings that you need for your project, and if you don't know how to do that, link up here for that, you need to go to your settings and you're going to add the high resolution option. Now, nothing's going to happen right now because we haven't set anything. But when you set this to any other number, it's going to give you a big fat error and warning because this is still a little funky and weird in Unreal. So let's set the tiles to, let's say, 4. Now, we're going to get this big warning sign. To summarize, whenever you're rendering in Unreal Engine, it's pretending it's playing the video game in the background and basically taking a screenshot of the viewport, but the difference between it being in your viewport and the render is you're actually adding more samples to your scene per frame. So in this case, when we have four tiles, it's gonna create 16 tiles to render to create the high resolution image. And the reason why this is useful in Unreal is that we don't have to render a full, let's say, 12k render in a single frame we can break it down into little sections and the reason why that's powerful is because it takes a lot of the load off of our gpu what this error means at the bottom is that some of the tools that are built in unreal engine will behave differently or just not work very well with the high resolution settings specifically high resolution renders do not support bloom and some screen space effects which we'll talk about in just a second but long story short the way you need to adjust this is in your post process volume so let's close this really quick let's just hit accept we're going to minimize our movie render queue and we're going to go to our post process volume it is absolutely 100% important that you set your exposure setting to manual. And when you do that, it's gonna definitely change your lighting. Fortunately, there is this exposure compensation dial, so we can bring this up. So if you are planning to do a high resolution render out of Unreal, do not work in an auto exposure mode. You must do it in manual and light based on that. So I'm gonna set this to like, let's say 10. 10 is actually a good spot for this exposure compensation to get back to where we started. This looks pretty good to me. Another thing that high resolution doesn't support is bloom. Basically it's creating like a glow around the brightest parts of our image. And this makes sense because a bloom is sort of creating a expansion of pixels around a certain object in our scene. And if a tile is happening around that bloom, we're gonna get some weird artifacts. So you wanna make sure that your bloom is set to zero in the intensity. And if you do not have your method selected or your intensity selected, you won't be able to change this value. So make sure you check it on, set it to zero, then turn it off. Also for safety, I always scroll down to my lens flare settings and I make sure that the intensity is also at zero. Now let's jump back to our render settings by clicking on the clapboard here and let's just get this ready to render. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this output directory to somewhere on my computer. And for the output resolution, we can scale this number up to theoretically anything we want, but Unreal and high resolution renders are not magic just because it's unreal in real time. It's still going to take a long time. So for this render, I'll set this to about 12K, which means I'll take 1920 and I'll multiply it by six. So asterisk six, and then the 1080, I'm gonna also multiply that by six. And this would be a 12K render. Now, if we scroll back over to the high resolution settings, we can see here that we're gonna have four tiles and that's gonna give us a total of 16 render tiles, but this tile is still around 3000 pixels large. So what I wanna do is actually increase the number of tiles to let's say eight. General rule of thumb is I'll try and keep my tiles less than 1920 by 1080. Now the last thing we need to cover in the high resolution render settings is this overlap ratio. So basically what's happening is that when it's creating a tile, it'll bleed some of the pixels over and beyond the tile so then when it actually creates the final image, 
it should clean up any seams. Now, if you do not do any of the exposure or bloom or lens effects correctly, you will see seams in your render, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But in general, and if you look at the Unreal Engine documentation, setting the overlap ratio to 0.1 to start is a good starting point. So with that done, we can now go ahead and hit the render button. After we kicked off this render, we're gonna see our render preview. And unfortunately, the render preview in Unreal Engine is not gonna give us a full render of our high resolution image that we're trying to create. It's only gonna give us the lower right hand corner. So what you're seeing right now is the, the white lower right hand corner of this render for this simple scene. But long story short, for high res renders out of Unreal, you have to be very patient. Just because Unreal is real time rendering software, it doesn't mean it's gonna be magic all the time, which is one of the reasons why I'm holding this camera and recording on a separate camera because it is basically loading an entire 12K image into the GPU and then tiling it. So we just have to let it go and do its thing. If you're trying to do a super high res animation, this is gonna be a very long process for you. 2,000 years later. I decided to go get some dark chocolate while I waited for my render because I wanted some. Six and a half hours later. I'm a monster and I really like 85% or higher dark chocolate. I even eat the baker's chocolate. It's great. It's actually very bitter and my girlfriend hates it, but hell, I like it more for me. So that one frame took eight minutes to render, and now is a time to dive into DaVinci Resolve and take a look at what we made. I have the render that I just made, and I'm going to drop it into my DaVinci Resolve media pool. And another thing that's also worth mentioning is this one single frame is 72 megabytes. So if you're doing a giant animation, your hard drive is going to fill up substantially and very quickly. I thought that was worth mentioning because if you're trying to do this and you're suddenly out of hard drive space, that would probably be the reason why. Let's take this screenshot and drag it into our timeline and we can see that the colors are way off and the reason why is the color space is completely wrong, but we can just go ahead and fix that. And if you don't know how to do any of that, I do have a DaVinci Resolve course that you can find in the link in the description down below that'll explain why and how I just did that. But with that said, hey look, we have a nice render of this little horse that we had in Unreal and very conveniently, there are no seams. There is no problem. And if we look very, very closely at specific parts of our image, it is incredibly sharp. Versus if we jump over to Unreal, while we can't zoom in based on this one frame buffer, we're getting a little artifacty jaggies there as we get closer. And if I were to leave my camera and just go in, sure, if we actually make the camera closer to it, we'll get everything nice and sharp. But what I'm trying to say is that, sure, the 12K render does give us a very sharp looking image, but it's at the cost of a couple things. Let's jump back over to the edit tab and we can take a look at this other sequence that I have, which is a bunch of tests that I ran because I like science. I don't know if this is science, but let's learn together about some of these other 12K renders that I did. So I have this landscape scene here that I created, and this one is a 2K render, and I did nothing to the scene, I did nothing to the blueprints, I found this on the Unreal Marketplace, and I just did a 2K render as is, and sure, it looks pretty good. Didn't touch any of the blueprints, which is why these weird white dots are actually supposed to be birds flying, but I didn't care to fix that. In the second version of the render, I basically did the same thing as the 2K render, but I did use the high resolution settings and tiled it. and. Sure, it looks fine, it gets the point across, and I see pretty much no difference other than the clouds here. Same thing, if I look at the 4K, obviously our render time went up because we're doubling the amount of resolution for this render, but looks fine. Same thing, but when we did the high resolution setting for the 4K render, we are now quadrupling the render time up to 45 minutes, and that's because it's basically trying to create a frame buffer for every single tile, which just makes it take longer. So what I'm extrapolating from this information is that if we add more tiles to our scene, it's going to increase the render time. Your render will obviously be different and you'll require different things, but it is worth mentioning as I've done my experiments with these renders here, more tiles means more time. Speaking of more time, if we look at the 12K render of this landscape, we can see here it took about three hours to do this versus the 2K was about two minutes. And we can jump over to the color tab to uh, get a better preview of this. Let's zoom way out. We can see here in the two minute render, yeah, it looks like a, a nice set of trees, but if we jump over to the 12K render, we're gonna get a lot 
more detail in those frames. And obviously that's gonna happen because as we're scaling up the render in Unreal, it's gonna bring more detail into those fine spots where you might lose some information when you crunch down the overall render size. We can see here that as I look at the distance and the mountains, we get a lot of detail as we zoom in to the 12K render, but if we jump over to the 2K render, we lose a ton of that detail. Now, this next set of renders that I did included an ArcViz scene. For all of my friends who do architecture visualization, words are hard, we have a 2K render of this little scene, and yeah, I'd say that looks pretty good. This is another example of a scene that I did where I did take something from the Unreal Marketplace and I did not do any changes to the settings as is. I was basically trying to emulate someone buying something on the Unreal Marketplace and trying to do a super high res render without having to do any work. Unfortunately, because I didn't change any of these scenes, the auto exposure did do some funky things. And we can see that right here. If we click on this render right here, yeah, it looks pretty good, but what's this shadow? actually doing. It's actually not a shadow. It is the seam I mentioned earlier. And that overlap ratio that I discussed in the high resolution render settings is causing this issue. And if we go over to this scene right here, it comes in very strongly as well, even though we have a bunch of tiles in our scene. Now, if we look at this render right here, where I set the overlap ratio to zero, we can see that there's some very distinct seams. And the reason why this happened is the manual exposure settings were not enabled, so the camera was trying to basically expose correctly. And when it's trying to do exposure for each tile and you have auto exposure enabled, it's gonna do some weird things. Fortunately, I did do another render test with this scene, and what I found is that when you set the manual exposure correctly and you turn off all the extra effects in the post-process volume and you render out a 12K image, hey, it looks pretty good. The reason why the lighting is different is we had to relight the scene and readjust the exposure of the scene to get something correct. But now if we look at these three shots right here, this is a 2K render out of the same scene versus 4K versus 12K. Now, what are we extrapolating from this information? The first is that the 4K render and the 12K render are almost negligibly different. And if you really want to pixel peep this image, if we scroll up to this lamp right here, we're getting a, a different sort of reflection in this scene. Why? I don't know, because Unreal is doing a bunch of scaling things. But if we bounce between these two renders and look at it from a distance, there's not gonna be that much of a difference here. So what I'm trying to say is maybe rendering 4K out of Unreal and then upscaling it after the fact is gonna be what you need. Now revisiting the render scene that we were doing earlier, we have that horse. Now we can see here that this looks like the scene that we had in Unreal. But this is the 2K version. And in the 2K version, there's some weird frilly artifacty things happening around the main here. Versus if we jump over to Unreal and look through our camera, it doesn't look like it's actually giving us that same effect. And if we leave the camera, we don't see any of those weird white artifacts happening around the very thin parts of the main here. So the 2K render out of Unreal was giving me some weird issues. Versus if we jump over to the 4K version, that little artifact cleans up a lot more. We do get a little bit right here as the geometry faces away from the camera, but long story short, 4K render looks super good. Now of the five renders that we're looking at for each of these scenes, the one that I have selected here is a 4K resolution render without the high resolution settings. And we can see as we bounce between them, there's some slight differences in the shadows. And I can't necessarily explain why that's happening, but my best guess is that it's basically adding more detail because the tile can focus in on a very specific part of the image. But if we look at this 4K render that was using the high resolution settings, and then we look at the 12K render, there's a little bit of changes in the shadow underside of the horse, but overall, from a distance, it's negligible. Obviously, we're looking at all these renders on a 2.5K monitor, so if you're looking at this on a much larger monitor, even though YouTube is probably compressing it a ton, long story short, the effects that you get out of the high resolution might not be worth the squeeze if you are doing something for a phone, a TV, or a monitor.
Now, the best thing that helped demonstrate what's happening in Unreal was this coral scene that I have. Here's a 2K version versus a 12K version. And we're getting some weird changes in the light, but also at the same time, we're not getting that much of a difference in quality. And the reason why is that the fidelity of the assets and the textures that you have is going to be a significant contributor to the resolution and quality of your image. So if we look at this 2K render and we scroll way in to this little coral bit right here and then look at the second version over here, it's just a texture being scaled up and getting a little bit more detail as we transition from the brightest parts of this yellow to the darkest parts of this yellow. So as we look at all of these renders that are rendered in 2K, 4K, and 12K in Unreal Engine, the best thing we can do for our scene is not increase the render resolution, but instead make sure that we're emphasizing the textures and the texture density and the quality of our assets in our scene. Now, let's say you are in a bind and you actually do need to do a 12K render in Unreal for some reason. Here is what I would do. I have this application called Topaz Labs, and it is $300, and I am not sponsored by saying any of these words, and I have the software here, and I'm going to see and run this experiment on YouTube so we can see what actually happens. It's basically AI upscaling software. I'm going to take this render of the coral and drop it into Topaz Labs. Now, this was rendered from a 2K image, and it is upscaled to 4K, and now what I'm going to do is upscale this all the way up to 12K. So I'm going to go into my output resolution, set my custom resolution, resolution to 11,540, so 540, and then we have to go down into our actual render settings, and the problem is that H.264 out of Topaz Labs does not render 12K, it has a limit, so we have to change the encoder to ProRes, and then we have to go in and set the codec to, let's just say 422 standard. As we increase the codec quality, we're also going to increase the file size, so that is something to consider. Standard is fine for a lot of these tests, and I'm going to make sure that I save this somewhere on my computer that I want. Export as, sure, we'll call this the Coral Tutorial Upres, sure. So after about 10 minutes of rendering out of Topaz Labs, we can right click, go to show and explore, import it into DaVinci Resolve, and let's take a look at what we have. So in this scene, we have this 2K render, which let's be real, doesn't look half bad. Let's turn off our meteor pool here and look at a fuller size image and yeah, looks like coral. And if we look at the upscaled version from the 2K image, we can see here we're getting a little bit more detail in the scene, especially if we look at the coral in this one section over here, more detail there, and if we look down here in particular where the focus of the camera is. Now, if we were to compare this to the 12K render out of Unreal Engine, we can look and see that it looks a little bit softer. We're also getting a little bit of a color shift, so that is something to address in another tutorial. But for this sake, we can see here that the, the coral spots look like coral spots, but in this one, the Topaz Lab upscaled version, there is this extra little detail there that you weren't getting in the native out of Unreal. So if we zoom out and we say that 12K versus 12K AI versus 2K, the 2K versus 12K are very different beasts. Now that is all to say that when it comes to rendering 12K out of Unreal, sometimes less is more and focusing on your lighting, your composition, your storytelling, the other parts that make the video that you're making sing and just feel good to the soul is gonna be more important than trying to get the biggest render possible unless you have to render for a building or a giant screen at a sports arena. This is probably fine. So with all of that out of the way, I hope you learned something in this tutorial about high-res renders out of Unreal Engine. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. That's what it's there for, or if you want to roast me for some reason, it's down there for that as well. And I will leave you with the final tip, and that is eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and you make some. Goodbye, my friends. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.